sending you peace, blessings, love, and abundance, dear hearts. So um, today I want to get into the Venus retrograde and other major astrological events in October 2018. Um, I did a little research on the internet and saw that it's um, definitely going to be um, a really big deal for the Venus retrograde. So I wanted to um, definitely spend um, most of the time talking about that, but also highlighting some other events that are going to make an impact on us. And I definitely want to shout out Astro Butterfly because she is really good um, at putting together the specific details of any of the astrological events. And um, so I'm going to utilize some um, information I read from her and then also provide you guys with some of my perspective as well. And also defining some things as I go along because I know with astrology, there are certain terms that everybody may not be aware of what they mean when I first started to get into astrology and look at my natal chart and things like that, I, I had to research it as well. So, yeah. I'm going to get into it. Hey, Piccolo. Piccolo came down. I'm shocked. Hey, Piccolo. Hey, buddy. All right. So, now, um, he's just sitting on the steps. He's so cute. He's one of the cats. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Venus goes retrograde and why Venus going retrograde is such a big deal and how it's going to impact us. All right. So the main event of this month is Venus is retrograde in Scorpio. Um, if you don't know what retrograde is, I've talked about it in videos, previous videos, but retrograde is when the planets appear to be going backwards. And whenever a planet is going into retrograde, that means that there is something, it's almost like it's going back to the past. So it's basically something in the past that we need to let out and release and not well acknowledge and then release in order for us to go forward successfully in the things that we want that we're we've been working towards okay um now venus is going to change course on october the 5th um from libra to go 10 degrees scorpio all right and it will stay retrograde until november the 15th so that means that this retrograde will take place for quite a over a month actually okay this is going to be one of the most intense Venus retrogrades we've had in a while. Venus only goes retrograde every eight years, just to let you know, okay, if you didn't know. And the reason why it's going to be so intense is because it will be in the sign or start in the sign of Scorpio. It'll end in Libra, but it's going to start in the sign of Scorpio. And if you don't know, that, um, I'm going to let you know about Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is a water sign. And which means that it's a sign of change and transformation. Scorpio is one of uh, a very spiritual uh, astrological sign. And it also has to do with what they call death. Well, that's why they say transformation. So Scorpio means that you are basically dying in a way. A part of you is dying in order for you to transform over to something else. It's like a caterpillar dying to become a butterfly. All right. That's the way that I look at it. So you're changing some things within you and then you're also dying to transform over to the next thing. It's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. And if you know anything about um, the history of Scorpio, Scorpio, I think, has about seven different um, animals that represent the sign. It's like the the Scorpio might be at the bottom of it. And then it goes all the way up to the phoenix being the last one. And the phoenix represents the most spiritual aspect of it, the wisest aspect of Scorpio, where the scorpion is more immature. Okay? So, yeah, just to get that out and give you a little detail on that. So, anywho, after any, any serious uh, Scorpio transit, something inside you will change forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever. Outcast, my one of my favorite group. Actually, my favorite fucking rap group of all time is gonna be Outcast, hands down. Mainly Andre Three Stacks, Andre Benjamin. He is the business. I love him. I love Andre. <laughs> He's a Gemini, by the way. Anywho, um, so Scorpio is the sign of hidden things. So Venus retrograde will expose your most hidden secrets, especially those related to love and relationships. And that is no matter how happy our um, your relationship may appear to be, there's always going to be stuff that's buried deep inside. There's always going to be something that you um, are not um, allowing to come out in order for you to deal with it. And that is um, what this retrograde is going to bring to the surface. Okay, so um, Venus retrograde will dive into the underworld and. 
don't don't get scared when we say venus is going into the underworld whenever you hear underworld think of horizon okay that means that venus will actually uh go below the horizon of the earth so normally we can see her in the sky whether it be in the morning she's been a morning star um lately i think but she went to the underworld so she goes from morning star to an evening star and, and back and forth she plays those roles which if you think of the bible they talk about the morning star jupiter does the same thing and i'm gonna do a video on jupiter because some really good information on my planet that governs sagittarius really really good things so um yeah i'm gonna do a video on that later and uh probably get that together if not tomorrow i'll definitely do it by friday because it's very interesting it's a different perspective on jupiter and it also gets into some mythology um getting into ancient kemet or egypt whatever you want to call it and also the ones who plagiarize which would be the greeks first and the romans so they also have different names for because the roman name it actually is jupiter that's the roman name for um the planet that they call jupiter but i won't get into that now like i said i'll give you because i want to give you guys really details and specifics on it because this is the type of stuff that like gets me excited like talking about astrology i'm starting to read tarot cards like reading about tarot cards because i'm getting into that as well um anything that has to do with the like magical mystical side sign me up for it you know what i'm saying even um reading um about sacred sex and you know sexual magic and how sex is supposed to be utilized in order to basically um make impactful changes as opposed to for manifestation for you to to uh kind of speed up the process of the things that you want coming to you and other things is really beautiful not just the magic of a child which is beautiful yes it is um however it's it's some other energies that comes from sex because of that kundalini energy and so i've been reading um or about to start reading that too but I'm reading like three, four different things right now. Um, so the sex magic one, I'll have to wa um, wait a little bit because it's another book I want to get to to get to the root of it, you know. But anywho, like I said, getting back to the underworld, Venus is going to dive into the underworld, which is going below Earth's horizon. So that means that she won't be visible for us to see her, all right? Now, when Venus dips below and she's in retrograde at the same time, she'll actually be in perfect alignment with the Earth and the Sun, all right, which is a big deal as well. Perfect alignment with the earth and the sun. And um, Venus will disappear in the rays of the sun and dive into the underworld. And at that point, that's where she's going to go get purified. She's going to the underworld so she can, she can purify herself. Think about how Jesus supposedly went to hell and then he, you know, came back up. And he was, you know, supposedly more higher spiritually. Um living more in his higher self or his more spiritual self it was a cleansing or purifying anytime um a planet goes b below the horizon is really to purify themselves so they can come back out clean that's think of that think about that being the process that we're supposed to take as well okay because there are aspects inside of this this body that contains our spirit that is being purified by this venus retrograde there are cells that are being impacted and affected by that because there are there are their own many solar systems and universes inside of you as well okay now um when venus is retrograde the pull of self trans transformation will be so strong that we will not be able to ignore it and that and i like to say that's whether it is conscious or unconscious Either way, a part of you is going to feel the pull of this transformation. And some people will be really, really emotional and won't know why. Again, Scorpio is a water sign and it's the most spiritual of the water signs. It starts with cancer. And it and um, then we have um, um, Scorpio and then we have Pisces. So um, Pisces is also very spiritual. Don't get me wrong. But the reason why with Scorpio, Scorpio is a fixed sign and so doesn't really like uh, change as much. But it is going to be um, really necessary to do so because if, if you really want to get the things that you've been working on, like how I've been working on myself um, for the last couple of years and this year I've really dived deep into my spirituality um, on a higher level and... Um, 
yeah, so if I just like I want to get achieve those things that I want to see, you know, the the glow. I just watched uh, the Last Dragon yesterday. If you want to get that glow like Leroy, Leroy, if you want to get that glow like Leroy, let's go ahead and get through this this Venus retrograde and um and Scorpio and come out on top, y'all. Let's do this. So um, this will be um, the most. Um, one of the most intense retrogrades uh, for us because it's in Scorpio. Now, um, Venus retrograde does make an intense opposition to Uranus. If you don't know what an opposition is, that means that it's opposite that particular planet. Now, Uranus is the planet of unexpected change, freedom, and liberation. Uranus, I talked about in one of my videos where I was talking about the seven-year cycles. Uranus takes 84 years to orbit the sun, and every 42 years, it makes um, a, a significant impact to us. However, Uranus does, um, whenever Uranus is in sight for us or making some type of aspect for us, it is for freedom and liberation. However, it also is for us to go into the unknown, like to go into uncharted territory, to set new patterns and things like that, to basically, you know, chart our own lane, create something new. It's a very creative planet. So, and it's also to go into something that you, and you may not know what it is, but you go into it wholeheartedly without fear, right? So, that this will be an intense opposition because of the fact that Venus is in Scorpio and then Uranus is about us changing. So not only are we in Scorpio where we're supposed to be transforming, changing and transforming, Uranus is telling us to, to look for unexpected change and look for freedom and liberation from the things that we've been hiding and keeping in us, okay? Now, usually one Uranus transit is enough for us to break the chains of illusion or the cycles of illusion that we've been going through. But this time we have a longer Uranus transit because Venus is back in back and forth motion. So we have a little bit more time to work on getting out of the illusion, out of the, the veil of the of the the way that we've been living, the things that we've been holding on to, you know what I'm saying? To lift that veil. Now also, because it takes so long, <clears throat> the Venus Uranus uh, opposition opposition will break the strongest chains. So that means that it's working to get deep, deep as deep inside of you as you can go. You know, that's where you're supposed to go to the abyss, right? Scorpio is like just look at the Scorpio as a, a as a big ocean, and you're going all the way to the bottom of the ocean where it's darkness, darkness, everybody, darkness. Go into the darkness, y'all. Don't be afraid. <laughs> go into the darkness and pull out whatever it is that you've been really holding on to that hold on to for dear life pull that out of your of your bag pull that out and and release that thing that's what this transition is about breaking that strongest tie that strongest chain that's keeping you so that you're sinking that you've been sinking to the bottom of the ocean it's releasing that finally all right now uh, ultimately, the Venus-Uranus opposition will liberate us from the prison of our outdated selves so that we can have mature, meaningful, meaningful, and authentic relationships. So who doesn't want something that's authentic? Who doesn't want people around them who are authentically themselves, who are comfortable in themselves, who, who, are, who um, are authentic about their relationship with you and the way that they interact with you is no falseness it's no fakeness it's all real and it's, it's that real mature shit it's that grown-up shit you know now um some of the other important events i'm gonna um get into one just passed actually on october the 2nd mercury was square pluto if you don't know what square what the square aspect is um, it's where planets or other horoscope points are about 90 degrees apart in the zodiac circle. Okay. Um, the classical astrology meaning of a square is that the powers involved are in conflict. They are conflicting, almost like they war with one another so that they cause trouble for one another. So again, we talked about how uh, Mercury is the planet of communication. It is a planet of the details because it governs Libra. Okay, Pluto is 
opposite that. So you're going to have, um, you will uh, experience some experiences, will, will experience or may have experienced, I should say, because this is past. And But it's still, you still have lingering effects of that energy. So during that time, you might have been experiencing some obsessive thoughts because we all have them from time to time. However, the reason why they become obsessive is that there are certain aspects of our lives that we believe we have no control over. And not just aspects of our lives that we believe we have no control over. Being obsessive and experiencing anxiety has to deal with you like thinking too far towards the future. So whenever you're focused so far in the future, you start to feel anxiety, okay? It, because you can't control something that hasn't fucking happened yet, right? So you have these obsessive thoughts over something that hasn't occurred because all you have is this very present moment. This is the only thing that is real right now is this present moment. What happened in the past is no longer here and what is going to happen in the future hasn't even occurred. So the only thing you have is the present. And with this particular um, aspect, Mercury square Pluto, um, the obsessive thoughts or thoughts that get, that got, or get caught in a loop because we're not addressing the underlying cause that created them in the first place, okay? So, I'll give an example of weight. If you are obsessed over your weight, you're always looking in the mirror, you're always counting your fucking calories, which is bullshit. You're always uh, like, I gotta watch what I eat. And not saying that, you know, being health conscious, making sure that what you put into this, this, this body, you treat it as a temple. Um, meaning you uh, eat healthier foods, uh, more alkaline foods. However, it's okay if you have something acidic because, again, it's about balance. But it's, some people will eat something that they that is unhealthy, quote-unquote unhealthy, and they'll obsess over the fact that they fucking ate that thing. Like, continue, oh, if I had ate this, I bet you added five pounds, and they want to jump on the scale and all this crazy shit. And then, again, the reason why I can speak to this is because I'm a slim girl. Call me Slimmers in Jamaica. Slimmers. However, <laughs> however, I used to obsess over my weight because I got teased for being skinny. So I used to obsess over, oh my gosh, too skinny. La, 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 blah, 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 blah. Just really just fucking ridiculous in, in the head, like in the mind. So I had to dig deep as to why I was so obsessed about my weight. Like what the fuck was causing it? What really was the root cause? Not not the effect. The effect was my thought process of the weight, but that wasn't the root cause. I had to dig down deep inside for the root cause as to why that mattered to me at the time. Why I gave a shit. You know what I'm saying? So that is what the Mercury square Pluto is going to want you to do. It's going to want you to find the cause of it. And Pluto is a very good um, sign, a uh, very good planet. Uh, even though the aspect may seem negative, that's actually a really good thing. It's a really good thing to be releasing things that you obsess over. That First off, obsessing over something is crazy in itself. But obsessing over something like the minuscule things, it is a deeper reason for it. That's what Pluto's for. What's the deeper reason? While well, Mercury is about the detective skills of the investigating. Mercury is the investigator. Okay. Um, so your challenge, um, this transit is to pay closer attention to these obsessive thoughts. Um, think about where do you feel powerless in your life? Think about why you feel powerless about those things. Because Pluto will always ask you the why and it will nag you until you dig deep to discover the answer and Mercury will help you with the details of it, okay? So um, once you have found out the reason why, you want to acknowledge it, okay? Acknowledge, yep, that's why. Be honest and truthful with yourself as as what uh, the retrograde is about, truth. And um, not only acknowledging it and knowing the why of it, because yeah, that sometimes can solve it, but it's being, it's letting it go. Cause you, even if you acknowledge it, sometimes we acknowledge like, yep, I know I do that, but no, acknowledge it, but also let that shit go, let it go and let yourself grow. Okay. So, um, I already talked about October the 5th, Venus goes retrograde, big deal. And, um, Venus is how the world makes us feel. When Venus goes retrograde in Scorpio, which is a sign of truth, you may discover some things in your life that aren't, aren't that pretty. 
Um, but the worst thing you could do is to try to brush them off, to brush it under the rug. And it won't work this time. It's, um, Scorpio is about exposing what's hidden. All right. So the more that you try to hide it, the more it's going to come back to you, the more it's going to make you face it. All right. Um, Venus goes retrograde in Scorpio for a reason. So we all have some skeletons in our closet. And once every eight years, when Venus goes retrograde in Scorpio, the skeletons have to come out. All right. Now, uh, October the 9th, new moon in Libra. Uh, the sign of balance, the scales. I am actually, my moon is in Libra. So my emotional self that I don't show people, the side of me, the in, inner self that I don't show people, uh, a lot of times is my um, Libra. And so uh, this will be pretty interesting. Even though it's in Libra, uh, the Scorpio is going to impact it. So I'm going to talk about that. So like I said, on October the 9th, 8th, 8th 9th, um, we have a new moon in Libra. This new moon is going to be square Pluto. Pluto is, listen, Pluto is saying, I'm here, y'all. Pluto is like, I'm not, I might be a little far away, but I'm here. So it's it's making some impacts this month. Um, Venus is the ruler of the new moon. And Venus is in Scorpio. And retrograde. That's a lie. All right, so new moon in Libra. The new moon is square Pluto. Venus is the ruler of the new moon, which happens to be in Scorpio and in retrograde. All right. So this new moon in Libra will feel more like it's on um, um, a Scorpio new moon. So it will be less about the love and the peace. You know what I'm saying? Less about that. All right. So don't think that you're necessarily about to just go out and find your soulmate. We'll, you'll be dealing with love and relationships, but you'll be dealing with the hidden, the hidden things that you haven't addressed that you haven't brought up the truth about the relationships the truth about you know the way you might feel about some of the people closest to you you know you'll be dealing with those the deepest darkest hidden things will be coming out because of the new moon and because of venus being retrograde and being in scorpio even though the new moon is in libra so new moons are um about new beginnings all right, that's what we set our intentions for the things that we want to, to come um, to fruition or to manifest during the full moon, right? However, this particular new beginning or new moon is going to be heavily influenced by the retrograde, heavily influenced by the retrograde, okay? There is going to be some unfinished energy due to the Scorpio aspect. So this new beginning will require us to dig into the past. Again, digging into the past, all right? Um... And even though most of the time people say, you know, let the past go, this is so that you can truly let it go instead of, you know, burying your head in the sand and or burying it down so deep that you feel like it's not going to come up. Anything done in the dark, what do they say, comes to the light, comes to the light. So even though you put it or thought that you buried it six feet deep, you need to, to undig it and unearth it. And really resolve those things. Be honest and truthful with yourself and resolve those things so you can move forward. Now, like Venus, when Venus moves forward and, and goes um, back to her normal cycle and is no longer retrograde. So, on the same day, Mercury moves into Scorpio. So, Venus in Scorpio, Mer um, Mercury in Scorpio. Now, the most investigative sign of the Zodiac, Scorpio. And... Mercury is a very investigative planet as well. So Mercury likes to get into the details of our thoughts and our feelings, i.e. it governs Libra, the scales of balance. There are things we usually hide from others and even from ourselves. Yeah. So it's, 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 this is going to be, that's why I said it's going to be real. It's going to be real, real. Now, um, Mercury is an objective planet and Scorpio is all about the truth, not the objective truth of Libra. But the emotional and sometimes ambivalent truth of deep water Scorpio. All right. Mercury in Scorpio is about applying radical honesty in your everyday life. It starts with being honest with yourself about your feelings of self and what things you bury under the rug that need to be swept out of your life. And I did a video talking about brooms and how our ancestors use brooms to sweep the negative energy. I went to the left when I was normally go to right. I've been doing a lot of things with the left lately. It's very interesting. Um, however, um, sweeping those things out 
this this is what this is. The things that you buried under the rug, it's time to to get it off under that rug and and deal with it. All right, once and for all. October the tenth. Oh, I feel like I need a burp. My little my little sissy burp sometimes. I like them to be real strong, just going to come out. That was barely, barely anything. Now, on October the 10th, Mercury is opposite Uranus and Venus is square Mars. So, Mercury opposite Uranus, Venus is square Mars. Venus and Mars, y'all. Y'all already know Venus is that feminine aspect. Mars is that masculine aspect. Mars is very fiery. Is that red planet representing that fire. It's very aggressive. And it's like that war aspect. Um, however, it still is attractive to a woman because that's like that man that be that oh look at him like that that um bad boy type of persona that's how i give that's how i look at mars like that bad boy type of persona and you got venus this pretty little flower this lotus flower bomb and um you know she just wants to talk about things and look at my beauty and the truth but she also but still venus is not just all about the physical things even though venus rules taurus which is the earth sign and very physical uh venus is still you know she is still uh, can hold her own, basically, with Mars. So uh, this is going to be a high energy, erratic day, y'all. Um, you you can have an irresist irresistible desire to speak your mind, or to take decisive action in one of your relationships, or if not all of your relationships. Taking action is always a good idea, as long as you take it from a place of confidence and alignment. Alignment is key. If you are out of alignment, it is not a good idea to rush into any action during this time. So, if you're erratic, don't do it. Don't don't do it. You need to you need to get yourself you need to get yourself balanced in alignment. Get yourself balanced before you take action with it. Otherwise, it will not go in your favor the way you would want it to go. All right. So. Um, on a positive side, positive side, these dynamic aspects can help you find creative solutions to some problems you've been avoiding. So that's a good thing, all right? Now, October the 12th. On October the 12th, the sun is square Pluto. The sun is in Libra, and Pluto is in Capricorn. We have um, some serious cardinal action going on, is what that means. And um, power struggle... Power struggles are usually the norm when the sun makes an aspect to Pluto, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way with you. Pluto only wants to show you that there are some higher truth about life that you may not be aware of yet. And Pluto will push you aside, um, will push you outside of your comfort zone so that you can find this higher, higher truth. So it, it's, it could be, or it probably will be a little bit uncomfortable at first, but in the end, it'll be worth it to go outside of your comfort zone. So this will be a great day for self-development or self-inquiry is how you can use that day. Now on October the 15th, Mercury is conjunct Venus at eight degrees Scorpio. And I might not have talked about the degrees. I meant to talk about that earlier. Whenever you hear degrees, uh, think of the zodiac wheel, which has the 12 signs going counterclockwise, Aries to Pisces. In each one of those 12 houses, they are divided up into three parts. And the three parts represent the degrees or the decan. So you have the first decan, the second decan, and the third decan. And what the decans represent um, are um, every 10, well, each house is 30 degrees. It is 10, each, uh, it is the 10 degrees. Um, gosh, what am I, let me get it together how I'm trying to say it. Each house is uh, supposedly 30 degrees in size. Some signs may um, be smaller or larger. It's not always that, but it's to be perfectly precise, it's broken up into 30 degrees. And in each one of those houses in the 30 degrees, they're broken up into 10 degrees. So the first decan is the first 10 degrees, the second decan, the next um, 20 of the 20, and the third one up to 30. And this actually represents the fact that 
and each sign, let's say for instance, I'm Sagittarius, you'll notice that somebody who said, like I'm a particular or have may have specific traits of Sagittarius, well, this other Sagittarius, you're like, well, y'all don't, don't really act like, but you're Sagittarius, or you, you can see the differences in it, is because anything in the first decade is actually going to be ruled by, well, each decade is ruled by another sign except for the first deck, it's ruled by the same sign or governed by the same sign of the house that it's in. So a Sagittarius, Sagittarius is what I am because I'm in the first decan. So I'm in the house of Sagittarius, but also being in the first decan, it takes on the traits of Sagittarius. The second decan of Sagittarius takes on the traits of Aries. So somebody who's in the second decan, they will be a Sagittarius Aries. They'll have the traits and qualities of Sagittarius and the sign Aries and so on and so forth. And it's like that in each one of the houses. Okay, because those 30 degrees add up to 360 degrees, 360 degrees, which is a complete circle, 30 times 12. Okay, sheesh, <laughs> did not want to come out, but that's what the degrees represent. I hope that, you know, gave you a little bit of clarity. Now, so Venus is making her last appearance as the evening star. So I said earlier about the morning star. Venus was the evening star, so you can see her at the evening, and she's going. She went down to the underworld to um, transform, so that she can come back out and then be our morning star. Um, a few days later, she will disappear under the beams of the sun, ready to be transformed into a morning star. Um, Mercury, on the other hand, has just emerged from the beams of the sun on October the 15th, and he will have a message for Venus, and this is a call for transformation. He's telling her it's time to transform. Mercury is the messenger. In the Bible, um, there are different characters, which I won't get into now, um, that were more of the the messenger and those people were actually representing mercury so a lot of times if you think about if you know the traits of a particular planet then you'll know what planet that person in the bible actually represented there are like numerous characters that represent each planet numerous um now venus will officially disappear from the sky on october the 18th all right now on october the 19th uh mercury is trying neptune and squares Mars. You um, you can have a lot of ideas, which will be thanks to Mercury trying the Mercury trying um, Neptune aspect. So you'll have a lot of ideas to come up. Neptune is definitely about you know um, helping with that. To be honest, um, but this particular square to Mars will help you put them into practice. And the reason why you'll be able to put those ideas in, from Neptune into practice is because of Mercury. Mercury will actually aid that process because again, Mercury is about the details. So it'll help you put the pieces together in order for your idea to come to come about, right? So if you are more reserved, this transit will give you the impulse you needed to bring your ideas into the world. So it's not just this idea, this dream, like dreamy Neptune, it's really something concrete that's manifested. Now, if you are um, very extroverted and confident, you can become a little bit too much in love with your ideas and try too hard to push them on others. So you also have to be open as well. You have to be open to um, to change and also open to listening to other people's ideas because that may actually make your idea even better and they may help you get it to where it needs to be so that it can be more impactful and better than you even thought it could be. Now, on October the 23rd, the sun enters Scorpio. Wow. Now, at the same time, let's remember that Venus is also in Scorpio. So the sun is going to enter Scorpio. Venus is in the underworld, still in Scorpio. Now, when the leaves start following and Halloween approaches, you know that the Scorpio season is about to set it off. Now, Scorpio is a sign again of change and transformation that can lead to inner strength. Now, Scorpio creates a bit of discomfort so that you can become stronger, better, and enjoy life even more. Venus is still, like I said, in retrograde. Mercury and Jupiter are already in Scorpio. So, Sun in Scorpio. Venus retrograde in Scorpio. Mercury is in Scorpio. And then Jupiter in Scorpio. Wow. There is no such thing as coincidence, y'all. Jupiter is about expansion, right? Jupiter is about knowledge and wisdom. Mercury is also about knowledge and details and um, organization. And, you know, so 
all of these things lining up together is a big deal. That's why I said this particular month, that's why I wanted to make sure I spoke on um, the different astrological events that were going on because I knew that it would be something that will make it is going to make a huge impact on on all of us. Now, when the sun joins in, he will shine his light so that you become aware of what exactly you need to transform in your life so you can become stronger and better. This is when the sun will go into the darkness and shine a light on it so you can fix it. This is when you really, when the transformation really, so at the beginning, think of it more as you starting to kind of get an idea of it. You starting to work on some things or whatever. The sun is going to say, oh, you missed a spot right there, you know, pointing those things out. That's what it's, that's what it's for. Uh, October the 24th, on the 24th, we will have a full moon in Taurus, the bull. And this full moon in Taurus will be exactly conjunct Uranus. All right. Uranus. That sounds so stupid. Uranus. Um, the moon and Uranus are in the first degree of Taurus and sun is in the first degree of Scorpio. The ruler of the full moon, Venus, is still in retrograde and she will be approaching the conjunction with the sun, right? And um, that's going to be, you know, a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Um, this means that something big is on the horizon, that's why I said it's a huge deal. Taurus and Scorpio are fixed signs um, as they resist change. I talked about this before, how Scorpio doesn't like change. That's why, you know, um, I can think of my mother. Don't like change, right? However, um, Uranus is the planet of change. It is. It's, it's of unexpected change. And um, Uranus is a planet of revelation, it means something needs to change. You may not know exactly what, but you already feel it coming. And with the sun shining a light on it, you'll definitely know what you need to change, whether you want to deal with it or not. Okay? Now, on October the 26th, Venus retrograde is conjunct the sun on October the 26th. And new Venus cycle begins. The interior conjunction with the sun basically means the end of the current Venus cycle and the beginning of a new one. This is important. This is um, the most important day of Venus retrograde, October the 26th, and one of the most important days of the year. Venus will be purified by the sun. She will shed her old skin. And this is where she gets clarity and where she sees her intentions for yet another 19 month journey. All right. Now, this is also where she will metamorphose from an evening star into a morning star. This is the, this day will be a turning point. So you need to pay attention to what happens around this date. You can also journal it as well, okay? Which was a recommendation from Astro Butterfly that you can journal it. And I actually really agree with that. I feel like you can journal all of this because um, you can utilize uh, some of the things that happened at the beginning of the month because at the full moon is where you actually are releasing things, where you can do your full moon ritual and you can burn, the, you can write those things down and burn it and, you know, get rid of it also that way. So you can do a purging that way. Um, with, this, with the Venus being in Scorpio, you can actually take a bath. You can get some you know, lavender, and I actually can do a video on that, um, how you can do a full moon ritual and do a, it as a cleansing bath and uh, utilizing candles and some sage and some different things. So I can do a video on that as well. I be putting all this stuff on myself. Do a video, do a video, and I want to make sure that I do it. So follow through. Now, um, on October the 29th, um, Mercury is conjunct Jupiter at 27 degrees Scorpio. This is the last aspect a planet makes to Jupiter in Scorpio um, before Jupiter moves home into Sagittarius. Yay! Coming home. Now, um, Mercury is the planet of news and announcements. It likes a message. That's Mercury, okay? So we can expect the big announcement of Jupiter in Scorpio transit, all right? In your natal chart, you will get some... Um, you will get some information about the area of your life ruled by Jupiter. If you are a Gemini ascendant, for example, um, and Jupiter rules your seventh house, you will get some news about your relationship. So wherever Jupiter is situated, I actually have talked about this in previous videos, why your natal chart is important. This is why your natal chart is important. When all these celestial um, events are happening in the heavens, you can see what point those planets are in your natal chart 
in order to determine what exactly you're most likely going to need to work on, okay? Like for instance, Jupiter is in my second house, which is Leo. And um, so I would know that I would need to look at uh, the qualities of that particular house in order to know necessarily uh, what I need to be focused on. Jupiter also is governed Sagittarius as well. So, it's, it's just different things. You have to look at the different aspects and the different parts of that planet that it touches that belongs to you personally, you know, in your natal chart, not the general senses, but you personally, because everybody's natal chart, everybody's blueprint is different, you know? All right. October the 30th, my mommy's birthday. Yay. Okay, so on October the 30th, Mercury enters Sagittarius. I love. That's a Beyonce song. I, I really, from her first album. Um, now, Sagittarius, Sagittarius is not um, particularly Mercury's favorite sign. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why. Mercury is the planet of factual information. It's about them facts. It's about them details. You know what I'm saying? It's about investigation. Mercury only believes in what he or she can see, hear, touch, taste, and smell. Okay? However, Sagittarius is a planet of abstract knowledge, of dogma, of what we believe without questioning. Sagittarius is a sign of philosophy and religion, basically. Um... So either we're really uh, philosophical, we can be, some of us can be extremely religious, I've been the religious type, which also can turn into, that's why um, I'm very mindful of me learning new things and getting into my spirituality to not turn it into a religion, not to turn it into being more of a dogmatic type of, you know, existence. Because that sign can easily turn things into religion. That's why, you know, people used to call me the church Nazi and bullshit like that. Because when I get passionate about something and I find some truth in something and I really want to share with other people, oh, and I want you to be on board. That was something I had to work on within myself. Because shit, people are going to do what they want to do. And it's not my job to save you. You know what I'm saying? It's not my job to, to, to make you see things the way I see it, you know, or follow me, you know? That's why I don't like the word followers on any of the social media, you know, you just link up with me, you know, hit the follow link, but link up with me. I feel like it's us linking together, not us following somebody because, you know, I'm a leader in my own right. So I'm not following anybody just like nobody should be following me, you know, in that manner. We just should be uplifting one another and being the teachers, the senseis and the students that we're meant to be. You know, I may be a teacher in one thing, a sensei in another, and a student in another thing. That is what we're here to um, to do. So, you know, I'm just sharing this knowledge with you because I found it very interesting. And I wanted to make sure that you, you know, um, had it in your arsenal so that you will be prepared for what's coming up, you know. Now, um... When Mercury sees the details, Sagittarius sees the big picture. We're always about the big picture, which think about the planet that rules Sagittarius, Jupiter, the biggest fucking planet in our solar system. And that's why I'm going to do a whole video about the beautifulness of my planet, Jupiter. Um, now, in the coming weeks, you may struggle with, with this particular um, aspect, to be honest. The only people that really won't have an issue with that is if... It, um, your natal chart had, um, if Mercury is in Sagittarius in your natal chart or if it's in Pisces in your natal chart. I actually have Mercury in Sagittarius, believe it or not, in my natal chart. It is in my, um, my, uh, house of Sagittarius. So this actually, and I thank my mama for it. I got to thank my mama for it because this is her birthday. I feel that energy. I feel like she was lining some things up because, um, even though I'll have other things I go through during this month, October the 30th, when Mercury enters Sagittarius, it'll be easier for me because I do have Mercury in my house, my Sagittarius house. All right. So for people who have Mercury in their Sagittarius or Pisces, you will feel at home when this transit happens, actually, okay? You'll feel right at home. So this should be like bringing it home for us. Like, you know, that we went through the home stretch. This is um, 
this is now like I can lay my head down and I can get a little bit of a rest because we've been going through other things throughout the month. Now, by striving to find details in the big picture, guys, um, to see the concrete in the abstract, you have, you can have some revelations. Okay, this transit is great for studying and any kind of intellectual work where a fresh perspective is needed. So if you've been working on your business, this this will be the time to uh, look at some other options, like study some other options and to look at some fresh perspectives, some different ways that you might be able to achieve what you've been working on. All right. And then the last day of October, October the 31st, Venus is opposite Uranus. Venus makes another exact opposition to Uranus. This is the second one. And shortly after, Venus leaves Scorpio. Remember, uh, November the 15th, Venus uh, will no longer be in retrograde, but she, she's going to leave um, Scorpio and go back into Libra. Okay? Um, and when she goes back, to, to after she has gone back into Libra, that's because she has already went through the process of digging into the depths of her soul through Scorpio. So she's like, shit, <laughs> let me get out of this. <laughs> Anywho, um, Venus will, like I said, be moving back into Libra, which will be much lighter for her and which she actually feels uh, more at home being in Libra. So this um, is a sign where she feels at her best. And on the same day, Venus rises again into the sky. All right. And um, this will be her first appearance of the year as a morning as a morning star. So she'll be alive and ready to start again. And then we are supposed to be ready to do so as well. We're supposed to follow this process. So these these it's as above. So below as below. So above court, the law of correspondence, guys. So just, you know, just do your best. Just do your best to to get to to get to the point where you're utilizing these transits not not thinking of as, as a negative thing but utilizing them as something that is like making you better that's helping you um heal i i like to think of it as a healing tool the planets are helping us helping us heal some some deep-seated issues that we weren't ready to release and relieve. Some things we have been holding on to that no longer served us. Some things that were actually weighing us down. To me, every time you're going through a retrograde, it's like you're getting weight out of you. You're getting weight. You got to get that. It's like the dirt off your shoulders. I feel like you need to get that weight off your shoulders. That bag later, that Erica Badu shit. Let go of shit. So, um... I really um, thank you so much, guys, for listening to this video. So I'm going to go ahead and end on that note because I was about to think of some other things. But no, I have other videos. I'm, gonna do. I'm actually going to do my um, a second video about Juno um, and talk about who Juno is. I think she's very interesting. So I wanted to give you guys some information on that as well. And um, like I said, I, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate you for watching my videos and for liking my videos, for subscribing to my Knowledge Butterfly channel on YouTube, and for uh, linking up with me on, on um, my Instagram and also on my Facebook. My Instagram is Knowledge Butterfly, and I always put the link uh, for my um, Instagram and my Facebook in, um, in the video bio, so you can get it from there. Uh, my Instagram, I definitely love to share. I share um, types of music. Like I just shared some reggae music I was getting into last night, getting into it heavy. I'm on a bouncy ball right now. You see me bounce a little bit. but um, um, So share some reggae videos, uh, music that I was listening to. And then one of the kitties was down here, uh, fell asleep in the chair. And then he woke up and started grooming himself. It was so cute. So, you know, I just share different things. And then I also share some knowledge sometimes. But I mainly like to drop my knowledge on my channel. Um, just because that way I'm expressing it in this form of communication versus just these posts and you're scrolling through. Okay, I like this. I don't like, you know, type of deal, you know. But to each his own. I do share knowledge on there from time to time. However, I just feel like I can get more out when I express it this way. So... I really love you guys. I really, really do. We are all connected. We truly, truly are. Um, oh, real quick. I didn't post because I do normally post when I um, on my Instagram when I have uh, uploaded a new video. 
I did a video talking about my perspective on Bill Cosby. It's the video before this one, so check that video out as well. It's me speaking my unadulterated fucking truth and not giving a shit what anybody thinks about it because it's my prerogative to do so and my Bobby Brown, okay? <sighs> all right, guys. I really do love you. I really thank you, and I'm sending you all that love out to the ether. Protect yourself during this retrograde and not just... Protect yourself. Release that shit. Let it go, y'all. Because it don't serve you. And you're going to come out even better like a butterfly. All right? Peace.